Hi, I am Dr. Sharjeen and if you remember few days back we discussed in detail herpes zoster of thalamicus and now one of my well-renowned friend ENT specialist Dr. Manzoor referred this 50 years old male patient to me who had the herpes zoster oticus. Herpes zoster oticus is also known as Ramsey Hunt syndrome. Now it was an interesting case. You can see the skin rash in the preauricular area and the whole dermatomal involvement. I asked the patient what happened to your eyes and why you were referred to me. And he surprised me by saying that the right eye vision has also decreased along with this rash. I and I am having deafness as well, which is a common sign in herpes zoster oticus and balance problem as well. But now I has also been involved. What I know about uh, herpes zoster oticus uh, is that it causes facial palsy that leads to inability to close the eye and then as a complication exposure keratopathy results. But here orbicularis was fine, I was norm I was blinking normally. His vision was counting finger in the affected right eye. Pupil was sluggishly reactive and mild, relative afferent pupil defect was present. Media was clear, so I decided to dilate both eyes. The other eye vision was 6-9 when I performed indirect fundoscopy as you can see. I found these dot, blot and flame shaped hemorrhages in all four quadrants with congested elevated optic disc. The other eye was completely normal so I diagnosed the patient with right central retinal vein occlusion. Now vein occlusion is reported in literature with herpes zoster ophthalmicus but I didn't found any relation with the oticus herpes zoster oticus then i checked the intraocular pressure it was normal both eyes to rule out intraocular common cause of central retinal vein occlusion which is glaucoma then i asked about the hypertension history and the patient told me that he is a known hypertensive for the last 30 years and take oral medications casually and i asked how frequently you check your blood pressure and he said once or twice in a month. So I diagnosed him as a hypertension induced ischemic central retinal vein occlusion in the right eye most likely unrelated to the Ramsey Hunt syndrome. So the two diseases they do occurred at the same time with a little bit overlap but they were unrelated to each other. Now let's talk about the vein occlusion. Vein occlusion is of two types, ischemic and non-ischemic. Now I call this ischemic vein occlusion. Why? Because I found the signs of the ischemic optic uh, retinal vein occlusion. The vision was severely grossly reduced, counting finger, relative afferent pupillary defect or APD was positive. There was extensive and deeper hemorrhages and severe disc edema here you can see the other eye absolutely normal <clears throat> whereas in non ischemic variety the vision is fairly good it is in between 612 to 636 or 660 or apd is not present um, the hemorrhages are more superficial bright red in color Macular edema is present in both varieties and maybe more in the non-ischemic types. Fundus angiography will surely help in confirmation of ischemic with widespread capillary non-perfusion, more than 10 disc diameter. OCT is also helpful especially in the monitoring of the progression of the macular edema if you are giving anti vagf injections monthly. So management of this case is multidisciplinary dermatologist for the skin rash, ENT for the deafness and other preauricular features.
auricular features ophthalmologist is usually reserved for the facial palsy associated with Ramsey Hunt syndrome but in this strange case vein occlusion treatment and follow-up is required by the ophthalmologist and also you have to follow the patient for the complications like new vascular glaucoma ischemic vein occlusion more likely to go towards the rubiosis NVG NVIs and painful blind eye as well and and physician is also required for hypertension management because vein occlusion or stroke can occur as well in this patient so treatment is usually reserved for the non ischemic vein occlusion like anti vegf for macular edema if the patient is pseudo phacic then steroid implant like ozeodex or intravitreal steroids if ischemic with new vessels if you find new vessels then prompt prp is required if ischemic without nvi and nvgs you can apply prophylactic pain retinal photocoagulation and if ischemic with macular edema like in this case uh, you can treat with anti vegf or steroid injections but with counseling for guarded prognosis so that was all about the herpes zoster orticus and vein occlusion thank you very much